some of the things you need to know before going on to furry series. Well, to start with, you need to know the sine wave and the cosine wave. They need to be really clear. Without them, furry series won't make sense. You won't understand the solutions. With them, it all starts to get a lot easier. So you have to make sense and be able to sketch quickly and easily a picture in your mind's eye the sine wave and the cosine wave. It's really, really important. So my sketching is poor. You'll get used to me apologising for my sketching, but hopefully you can get a picture. You can look at them online, find them in a textbook. You need to know certain things. You need to know, for example, that sine of zero is zero. You need to know that sine of one pi, sine of two pi, sine of three pi, sine of four pi, sine of minus pi. You need to know they're zero. You have to know that. You should know that sine of a half pi is one. That sine of one and a half pi is minus one. So there's some of the things that you need to know. So you have to be aware of that. Let's look at the cosine wave. What do we need to know here? We need to know, for example, that cosine of zero is one. We need to know that cosine of pi is minus one, and cosine of two pi is plus one. Cosine of minus pi is minus one. <coughs> so this sketch needs to be imprinted along with this one into your, into your brain. Absolutely vital. Let's have a think about what we've got. Again, my sketching isn't great, but you should be able to spot, or you should know already, that this is an even function. It's even because it's symmetrical about the y-axis. So if you were to put a mirror here, you would see a reflection. Again, maybe not from my awful sketching, but you should be aware of that for the cosine wave. So what does that tell us? Well, if it's an even function, it tells us it doesn't matter whether the value is a positive or a negative, in terms of x, we'll get the same y value. For example, if I have a positive pi for x, I get minus 1 for y. But that would be the same as if it was a minus value for the x, the minus pi. So it tells us that if it's even, it tells us that. It says cosine of any value, I've just put x in there, is the same as cosine of minus that value. So cosine of 2 would be the same as cosine of minus 2. Cosine of pi would be the same as cosine of minus pi. That's really important. Again, something you need to know. This function clearly isn't an even function. It's not symmetrical about the y-axis. <coughs> but there is a point of symmetry at the origin. So this is an odd function. And again, you need to know what an odd function looks like because you might need to be able to sketch it or see a sketch and read from it. In this case, if it's an odd function, then we can say that. We can say sine of minus x, so if we pick a value for x, say pi, sine of minus pi is zero. And that must be the same as minus the sine of pi, which of course it is. Or you could pick any value. You could pick pi over 2 or a half pi. So if we let x be half pi, then sine of minus a half pi is minus 1, whereas sine of plus a half pi is plus 1. So this holds true. And again, these are just things that you need to know. So what can we do with this information? How useful is it going to be for you looking at Fourier series? Sine of zero is zero. Sine of n pi is zero for all n, where n is plus or minus one, plus or minus two, etc. You have to know those things. What about cosine? Cosine of zero is one. Cosine of n pi, well, picture the, the sketch that you saw a moment ago. Cosine of n pi can take on two values, but only two values. It could be a plus one, or it could be a minus one. Nothing else. As long as n is an integer. So n could be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 
then cosine of n pi can only ever be plus or minus 1. And this is vital. You'll see this week in, week out. So you have to make sense of this. So picture the sketch. But we might want to delve into this a bit more. And what we could do then is we could say, well, if n is odd, I can be more specific about cosine of n pi. And if n is even, I can be more specific about cosine of n pi. It turns out if n is odd, cosine of n pi is minus 1. And if n is even, cosine of n pi is plus 1. So for example, we saw on the sketch a minute ago, cosine of 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi was 1. We also saw cosine of 1 pi, or cosine of pi, and that turned out to be minus 1. But without having to sketch a very, very long sketch, we should now be able to say that we know that cosine of 300 pi would equal 1. We would know that cosine of 299 pi would equal minus 1. So along with the sketches, these are things that are going to be really useful to you. So make a note of these.